Hi, in this video I will show you how to set up a simple pin tracer. And this is a very basic uh, pin tracer that you can find on my GitHub profile called Tiny Tracer. And I use it on daily to analyze malware, to obfuscate some obfuscated malware. And I will show you uh, what exactly it does and how to make it, how to have it uh, ready and working on your machine. Uh, first of all, this is a pin tool, so it requires uh, Intel pin uh, to be installed on your machine uh, because it runs only with, with Intel pin. And uh, the build that you can find here, this one, uh, as, it, as it is mentioned, it is um, built with the latest pin, pin 3.7. So, um, I already downloaded this uh, pin version, I unpacked it and uh, I also downloaded uh, this uh, compiled package containing uh, 32 and 64 bit versions uh, of uh, my tool. So I will show you uh, how to have it uh, ready and working on your machine now. First of all, uh, you have to unpack uh, Intel pin and you have to install it inside you will uh, it doesn't have any installer it have just a root directory that you will have to copy somewhere on your machine and I will copy it on the C drive or maybe maybe I should move it but it doesn't matter now and in the meanwhile, uh, you can also unpack the package that I prepared and take a look on the README. Uh, I try to make it as user-friendly as possible, but there are a few things that you have to edit in those files. So first of all, uh, edit the uh, runme bad. I will show you directly how to make it working from your context menu so that uh, it will be very con convenient to trace any application of your choice. And in here, you will have to edit a few things. First of all, pin directory. If you will put uh, your pin somewhere else, then in C pin, you will have to change this location. Um, in my case, it is here. I may change it to pin 3.7 just to be brief. So I'm putting this directory here and uh, in pin tools dir and you need to put all those files so you can make you can either um, give this path and place it here or you can copy those files to some other directory uh, for now I will keep it like this and uh, what well, this file says you also have to edit add many uh, reg yes and here you have to uh, put the actual path to this uh, run me file so it will be in this case this Oops, not this this and this okay and yeah after you have it you can just run the admin as administrator yes okay and now as you can see it added uh, this many to run your uh, all your executables with pin and this script will automatically choose either 32 or 64 bit version of this tracer depending on um, your application if it is 64 or 32 bit so let's try to uh, run with pin 
and if uh, you as you can see it generates a tag file where it just uh, shows you uh, what API calls have been performed uh, by default it's set to just print uh, name of DLL and the name of the function that was called but you can also make a change if you want to see full paths and you can have extended uh, extended tracing you can disable short logging just by putting zero here and again run with pin and now you have long paths uh, I recommend you also to install Beartail so that you can view the log as it as it progress in real time. Let's say free version. And it's very comfortable because it will show you the log that it is creating. And all the API calls are visible here, but not only the API calls, also transitions between one section and another in case of um, in case of executables and that are, for example, packed, um, the, um, they they don't execute only uh, a code from only one section, but they can jump from one section to another. And I will give you an example after a while, just I will disable the short logging. For example, uh, let's take a look on, uh, on this crack me. And you can see uh, here the execution went somewhere to unmapped area and it's probably because of the fact that uh, there was some shellcode and the execution is now redirected to the shellcode. So you can directly find the places where the shellcode is called. And those, this tag file can be uh, loaded by default um, when you uh, just open the application in Piber. So all those calls that are not, that are for example dynamically resolved, they are now filled. And you can see from which place this shellcode was called here. Another example uh, will be an application packed uh, with VM Protect. I will show you how it shows the jumps between one section and another.
So you can see it started execution in the VMP1 section. It uh, called all these API functions and then it went to VMP0. And in VMP0, it started from this offset, called all those functions. And later, we can see many jumps between one section and another. Uh, you can view these tags in PBAR. You can also uh, load uh, those tags to IDA uh, via my plugin IFL. So it's also it's also convenient because whenever you have some, or let's say, calls like this that uh, are obfuscated and the address is then dynamically calculated, uh, this plugin will just add you. Uh, add you the names of the functions that has been called here so it can simplify a lot uh, analysis of obfuscated malware so that's all for this video in the next video I will show you how I used uh, this uh, tool to uh, analyze uh, Magnibar ransomware to unpack it and also to see its obfuscated calls